All right, all right. We are going live right now. I'm so excited to be here again. And I want to welcome my friend and lovely lady, Sharif. And we're going to be talking today about feeling good. And that's the secret. Feeling good as hell is the formula to get what you want. And we all desire so much for our lives. So we're going to jump into her formula, but let me share a little bit about her. Charisse is an image consultant, CEO, beauty pro, tastemaker, self-image and concept coach, community curator, and energy healer. She helps beauty pros, female entrepreneurs heal, teach, speak, and grow from a one-woman show to a CEO to allow themselves permission to adopt and embody the style and mindset to build community, elevate and evoke evolution and create. Sharice facilitates her clients transformation through her CEO Beauty Pro community and her CEO lifestyle concierge for high level entrepreneurs and execs. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So much Trisha, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for the intro. <laughs> Everybody, I, I really have to tell you, um, we met on this, we met in person on this retreat and she actually really gave me some amazing pointers, like stuff when we are doing our business, we're so like sometimes in this tunnel vision that we don't see all these other possibilities. And she actually shared possibilities and opportunities and my head was spinning by after was it two, three days. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> cool. I had a really good time at that retreat. Uh, oh. That was, I felt like who was there was supposed to be there. And I feel like it was a, a life defining moment yes. for all of us, truly. And especially watching everyone leave that retreat, come home and then execute the work. That was, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could go on a retreat, but here's the thing. A lot of people do things, but then they don't come home. They don't implement, they don't execute. They just get stuck back in this old way of being. And yeah. what's exciting is when you really start to participate and create that environment and have these people with you, yeah. it is just, it is something, there's something to be said about that community. Absolutely. For sure. So let's, let's go. I'm, I'm dying to hear about your hell. <laughs> oh, cool. So let me tell you about this formula. Uh, it was something I discovered, Trisha, when I was in some really dark places in life. Um, I was going through divorce. Business was crazy. Um, and before that, I had went through a couple of miscarriages back to back, you know, and um, it was just dark for me. But, 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 you know, I work with people every single day, every single day. And I needed to not transfer dark or negative energy to my people, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why even now, like when I talk about the moments that were dark, like where the formula came from, I don't sit there long, Trisha. Like I'm not gonna sit in any dark conversation or any dark moments very long. They happen for a reason, um, they are real and you know, we have to deal with them, but I'm not gonna sit with them very long. So that's why I love to go ahead and talk about where it came from and jump into, you know, how the formula um, was a really lifeline, a true lifeline in my life. So with me dealing with women and hair, you know, at that time I was a full-time hairstylist and every day I was working with someone's hair and their energy. And I just knew it would be mornings like you come in and I just didn't even want to be there. Like I, I didn't want to be at work, but I couldn't show that, right? I, I could, there's no way. It, it just wasn't part of my energy or my brand to show or display what I was going through. And not that I wanted to be dishonest, but people were coming in to me for help. 
you know, people were coming in to me for my energy and to pour out the things that they had been through. Uh, and just as a safe space, you know, they needed someone to talk to. And I've always been that safe space for them. So I realized like, wait, I got, I got to find a way to get through this pain, not transfer this energy onto other people and, you know, cover and protect myself, get through the day and then get home. <laughs> And then get ready for the next day all over again. So that is when I always uh, was into meditating and into, um, you know, just quiet time and just prayer and, and making sure that I was connected to source. Right. But it had to it had to go to another level. And uh, because I, I truly had to work truly hard to keep myself out of that dark space, because, you know, you know, when you're going through hurt and pain and it just comes up and bubbles up and it just, you know, just takes your heart. And I, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't display that. So I had to teach myself to go through my rituals at night, okay, before bed. So once I um, went through those rituals at night before bed, I realized like, oh, I would wake up sometimes feeling down or low. And I'm like, oh, I need to do it in the morning as well. And then I realized like, oh, wait a minute, it's helping. I need to do this throughout the day. Oh, wait a minute. I think it's really working. So like, I need to be able to tap in, tune in at any point in time during the day, Trisha, and bring myself back to a feel good moment, you know? Yeah, I, I and, get it. But yeah. I definitely want to go back to, to one thing you said, because this mm -hmm. is really important. I don't know if anybody else caught this, but um, there are times in our life where the shit hits the fan, where yeah. we have meltdowns, where life just feels like it's against us. And listen, I've been there. I, I definitely had some very serious health mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. But the best thing you could do for yourself is not sit in it. Not sit in it. It is it and not continue on with the story. It is address it. It is feel it. It is move on from it, but not sit in it. Because when you sit in it, it's like you just keep going over it and going over it and going over it. And you're not moving forward. And, and some of us have dealt with some really terrible things in our lives. I, I don't take that away from anyone, but it's about. And I can't wait to hear your tools, but it's truly about dealing with it and moving on with it. Because I know I've been to hairdressers and I've it's funny because I've actually listened to conversations going on in the salon. And I'm like, oh my God, sometimes I'm like, she did not just tell her that. <laughs> and I'll laugh and I'll be like, oh boy. But, you know, we have some hairdressers in the family too. And they tell me, they're like, people just come and it's like, you're their therapist. Yes, yeah, seriously. You are their therapist. So it's like yeah. you're already exhausted and now you've got this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of um, hairstylists who, not just hairstylists, but anyone who um, deals in service, especially one-on-one -on -one service and, and dealing with a lot of people and their energy, mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of them sometimes don't realize that, you know, they are healers and mm -hmm. that you have to make a safe space for people. So, and if people come to you and are vulnerable and want to open up to you, that means make it a safe space. You know, that's, that's part of my, uh, in my programming, I have to make sure that my people are understanding like, Hey, you're a safe space, whether you realize you signed up for this or not, like mm -hmm. it's a mandate in this industry and in this space. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome because it, yeah. it that's people need to feel safe when they come to you. They need to feel heard. They need to to have that opportunity to be vulnerable and to share with you so that you really get where they're at. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you feel like? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm such an interviewer. <laughs> We're back to hell. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so um, basically, you know, with the hell, um, I had created my rituals realizing that, oh, I need to tap into these rituals like any moment, you know, when I feel like I'm getting off my game, 
uh, and I need that, I need that space. It's like, I got to be able to tap into something. So with those rituals, like I, I would do my um, morning meditation or in the moment meditation. Um, I do my visualization. I do my deep breathing. Okay. My gratitude moment and also my tapping, you know, the EFT. So for me, what I heard, I remember one day I was like, oh, wow, this is hell. This is pure D hell. <laughs> but I'm like, I can't live like this. So I got to make this healing some kind of way. <laughs> so <laughs> when I um, tapped into, I, I read um, The Feeling is a Secret by Neville Goddard. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it is the feeling. Like the feeling is, the feeling is everything. So when I realized like how I feel, first of all, is up to me. Okay. And it's up to my work. Okay. I don't have to be a victim to my feelings. And um, the feeling for me, I needed to go ahead and face it because I was used to avoiding, you know, and, and, you know, pushing it under the rug. But I'm like, you know, there comes a time like you're going to have to go ahead and face this stuff. Like you're going to have to face it face to face. <laughs> you got to do some real mirror work and, and say what it is and, and put it out there and understand. But do understand that you don't have to live in it and you don't have to sit in it. Like you said, Tricia. And that for me is where that hell acronym came from. So I'm like, oh, wow. So it's the feeling good as hell. And I, you know, I have good energy. I am really about the feel good, the feel good energy. But a lot of people think about, think it's like um, the whole, um, you know, oh, happier uh, in a cloud all day. You know, you're just somewhere in la la land. And it's really not. The feeling good as hell formula is about really truly facing yourself and feeling through what you have to feel through so that you can get to what you have to heal through, right? Because if you don't face what you really truly feel, there's no way you're going to get to the healing of it. And the healing of it is what we need to evolve, to love, and to live life out to the fullest. So that is what my HELL acronym about, uh, is about, the healing, the evolving, the loving, and the living your life to the fullest, you know, but not just, you know, not just not facing it, but truly facing the things that you are going through because you can get through it. I think sometimes we are taught in our programming that we're not going to make it through, that life is going to be hell for you forever. No, this is just a moment in time. This is just an experience in time that is here for you to make you better. I love that. I absolutely love that because too many people get stuck in it and they don't, they don't move forward. And, and you're right. Cause too, yeah, I've also heard the other extreme. Oh, it, it, you're happy and you're not really paying attention, but yeah. that's not what you're saying. You're yeah. saying to actually, to move through it, you actually have to feel through you it. Feel. You can't ignore it. You can't push it down. I, I, years, I was the queen of push it down. Yeah. If I oh, didn't yeah. look at it, it wasn't there and push it down, push it down and push it down until one day it said, I'm done being pushed down and yes. now yes. it's time to feel it and, and, and heal it. Yeah. You feel know? it and heal it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Feel it and heal it. Truly. Yeah. Also, you know, we were for today's topic, you know, we were talking about, you know, how you really truly feel about yourself is what you see showing up in life. You know, like how a lot of people aren't, aware like that self-awareness is everything and you're wondering like why is life showing up like this you know why are these relationships keep showing up these same people in my life keep showing up these same lessons keep showing up and it's pretty much because of how you see yourself how you feel about yourself and how you value yourself, you know, and if you're not constantly evolving that, because we might see ourselves the way our parents saw us, the, the way our parents programmed us to see ourselves, right? You know, so if maybe they said something to you that made you feel not smart, or maybe they said something to you that, uh, something about weight or uh, money, of course, that's our big thing, you know, money, money doesn't grow on trees. So your yes. program, <laughs> and money doesn't grow on trees when in actuality, paper grows on trees. It really does. So what are you talking about? <laughs> or I don't own, I don't own stock in the light company. There you go. All that, 
of it, which are opportunities for us now, you know, yeah. real true opportunities. So, but if that was our programming, if you heard that since you were in the womb, that's how you're going to live. That's how you're going to see yourself. And if no one reprograms you, which I feel like our parents, it was their job to do that, but they couldn't because they didn't know to, you know, uh, they live it. They continue to live a certain lifestyle because that's how they were programmed. And they didn't know any better than to change our mindsets and to shift our thinking uh, into a better way of thinking and seeing ourselves. So I really wanted to dive into that more today because I wanted to help shift people's thinking, you know, in a really simple way today, as far as how they see themselves, you know, and just thinking, you know, I asked this question in one of our sessions and it's a, it's a hard question once you really think about it. And it's simply, how do you see yourself? How do you want to see yourself? And how do you want the world to see you? And that, as you witnessed, was one of the hardest questions to answer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when you asked me, I'm like, please don't ask me. <laughs> no, please don't ask me. And of course, you're like, you ask, and I'm like, you know, and, and it's interesting because when you're put on that question, I immediately was like, oh my God. Yeah. And then that is like, that is a, a question to actually dig into because you, you seem to think one way, but if you look at your outward appearance and your outward environment, that's telling you something else. Yeah. And I think that's where our self-awareness really needs to come in going, well, this is what we're seeing and this is what we want. And this is what we believe. There's a disconnect. Yeah, it is. Especially when whatever is around you, you create it. Oh, yeah. You know, people truly aren't tuned in and tapped into that, Trisha, because they, they don't want to believe that they created the environment that they're in, especially if it's a negative environment or an undesirable environment. Environment. No. No, I wouldn't. Listen, I'm I'm the first one to admit through years, I, I didn't do this. It was this one. It was that one. It was this one. It was <laughs> and then, you know, self-awareness, evolution, growth, desire for more yeah. had me stepping in and taking full responsibility of every single aspect that went on in my life. Yeah, absolutely. That and keyword, keyword, taking full responsibility and count, accountability for where you are in life. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people aren't even aware of, wait a minute, I should be accountable for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should. <laughs> accountable <laughs> for where you are, how you got there, <laughs> and how you're going to get where you want to be. You know, so that it's for me personally. It's the self-awareness, the accountability, and then the discipline on top of that, that it takes to get there. And it's not a, it's not an easy journey at all. I would, I would love to, to actually, if you could go into a little bit more about self-awareness, because I don't think people really understand <laughs> what it means to be self-aware. Yeah. And then you brought up another amazing point, discipline. Oh yeah, the discipline, which is, ooh, I think all of us have a discipline issue. But when it comes to self-awareness, you know, just simple, you know, I try not to be too <laughs> overly scholarly or anything like that. I really like things in layman's terms so people can understand it and take it and implement it in the moment. But when it comes to self-awareness, you know, do you know who you really are? Do you know why you are operating the way you operate? Do you know why you think the way you think? You move the way you move? Are you conscious of why you've created this environment that you have? around you, the job, the friends, the um, partners in life, you know, where you live, like you really truly created it. And either you created it unconsciously or consciously, right? Uh -huh. But a lot of it comes from our subconscious being. And 
that is where you can kind of say, I didn't create this. I did not. No, you did because you did not take responsibility for where you are. If you're hurting, if you are sad, if you're in pain, if you are not satisfied with any space that you are in in life, there's something you can do about it, right? The awareness is that the information is here more than ever. The information is here like never, ever, ever before. And do you love yourself enough? Do you see yourself worthy enough to seek more for yourself? So that is where the self-awareness comes in. It is the accountability. Let me take true accountability for these reckless and irresponsible situations I may, I may have caught myself in. Or, or let me take responsibility for the amazing space, the good things, the bad things, and the ugly that I've attracted into my life, you know? So as far as I'm concerned, you know, the self-awareness is just understanding why you truly make the decisions that you make uh, and move about life the way that you do it. Why is that? And you have to re dig really, 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 really deep because it was probably your upbringing more than anything. Yeah. Oh, that, 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 that's a definite. And I find that the more you dig in and the more you have these types of conversations, mm -hmm. um, like I, I was in a class and I, somebody else was talking. See, this is what I love about accountability and your environment and creating these spaces and participating and investing in yourself mm -hmm. is when you also hear other people talking, it is like, well, all of a sudden these little, these little blurbs, you know, like over your head will come up, they'll pop up. And then all of a sudden you'll start to realize, oh my God, that's also me. Or you'll remember a point in time where something had happened to you that made sense. Yeah. Yeah. So like things like that, I, I definitely agree with you 100% because it is, and our parents do the best that they can with what yeah. they have. Yeah. It does not mean that, you know, you have to keep going in that vein and hanging out with them and being yeah. around them. You need to really focus on where you're at and understanding who you are. And a lot of people, a lot of people don't. So I love having these conversations about this. Yeah, yeah, I think, and I, we did earlier touch on um, Gen X and the way that we were raised and, you know, why we are in some of the positions that we are in and we have to take responsibility. And I think we need to do it as a collective, Tricia, yeah. you know, like we see each other, we know each other, you know, so, hey, let, let's take this journey together and let's hold each other accountable. Let's hold hands, let's hold each other accountable together and let's grow together you know, and let's change our lives and let's change others' lives together, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And discipline, my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Discipline is something, I think it is difficult for a lot of people in different places where, you know, workout for me um, and discipline may not be a big issue, right? But time management, well, I'm speaking truth. <laughs> so working out for me is easy. But when it comes to time management, I'm still working on that thing. <laughs> and I'm doing so much better, but I need more discipline when it comes to time management. And especially in my transition in life um, with the, um, you know, with the business transition. So I have to make sure that I am getting my business time in. Probably the same thing with you too, as a full-time entrepreneur, you know, you have to be disciplined to make sure that you're getting the work done, putting the same amount of time and love into your business as you did those eight hours that you went in every single day, right? Like that's discipline. You know, discipline is also uh, your mindset and how you think, you know, are you disciplining your mind? Um, you don't have to allow your mind to think all over the place. You don't have to allow your mind to go on and think, uh, take a negative thought and think on it all day. You can discipline your mind, you know, with the right rituals and the right prayer and the um in the right repetition you can discipline your mind to shift a thought in a moment 
And that is what I am more interested in than anything, I think, is helping people shift their thoughts in a moment so that they won't go hurt someone <laughs> or so that they won't go off the deep end and make a bad decision that's going to affect their life forever. You know, uh, discipline is everything. Oh, yes, it really is. Um, you know, it's funny you say that because of course I'm not disciplined. <laughs> um, more so like you, you're very disciplined in exercise. I, I had been working on my discipline with exercise in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm finding more time for my business because that is what you, you really have to do. But I also love that you keep talking about rituals and meditation and conversations with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And a lot of people believe that, you know, oh, you have to do everything a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I'm all about quick and easy, like yeah. quick mm -hmm. and easy. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about your rituals at night and in the morning, and even now, how long are you doing them? Is this something that can be done like five minutes, 10 minutes? Do you know what I'm asking? Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. I totally get it because, you know, it's just like, you know, I grew up in the church. I grew up, you know, the longer you go to church, the longer you pray, you know, the longer you read the Bible, the more blessed you're going to be. That's literally, I feel like how I was brought up. And so I felt like, oh, I got to meditate forever. So I'll get it. But I was falling asleep when I meditated, you know, and I'm like, I would cry like, oh my gosh, I'm falling asleep. I'm not getting this. I'm trying, you know, and then when I was more enlightened, I learned that, no, it's the intention that matters, okay? Mm -hmm. But as long as you create the habit of, because you can meditate in a moment, you can have a 30-second meditation, and you literally, Trisha, can go in with five deep breaths and meditate. Like, that's why the affirmations are so important. Mm -hmm. You have your key words. You know, like, for me, I am focused. I am fearless is they're very important for me because focus is important to me and then being fearless is important for me, okay? So if ever I need to go into a meditation uh, and, you know, because my, I hear, I feel my mind and hear my words going off <laughs> the meter, I just take a minute and, and I literally do this anywhere in the car. You know, when I was in the salon, people would be like, Sharice, what are you doing? I was like, I'm meditating. Shh. <laughs> Meditate with me. <laughs> And just take a moment, <sighs> take a few deep breaths, you know, with my morning rituals and my nighttime rituals, I would do 10 deep breaths, you know, 10 deep breaths, 10 times a day that that will help train you to go into five deep breaths easy. But as you're doing those deep breaths, you know, I'm focused. I am fearless. I am free. I am focused. I am fearless. I am free. And when I tell you that will bring me back centered so fast, then I could get back to what I'm doing. Okay, so it could take, you could take 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes. If you get a break to go to the restroom, just sit there for a second, you know, to the car, whatever, just create your own ritual that will set you back centered so that you can move about your day and operate and get the things done that you need to. There is no more time, Trisha. Like we're, we are in a space and time where we don't have time to be unfocused. We don't have time to not know how to get focused. We don't have time to let other people and situations get us off of our dime. Our time is very critical and it is very, very valuable. So a moment that you have let someone get you off of your game and have you offset, it's like you're wasting time that you could be helping someone, that you could be helping yourself, you know? So I, I am big on staying centered and thinking, you know, if there's a moment when someone needs help or you need to read a person in their situation and what's going on, you can't do it if you're not centered. Agreed. You cannot do it if you're not centered. So you're actually, you, what you're talking about right now is you're actually peace. You have full peace mm -hmm. in the eye of the storm. Yeah. So oh, anytime yeah. something 
disrupts or there's some kind of chaos that's going on, you're staying centered and you do it with these deep breathing exercises and these affirmations, yeah. which are core beliefs. Core beliefs, yeah. Which are core beliefs. Yeah. I mean, we all can do this. It's, it's, yeah. this is all about like, she is, Sharice is giving you guys quick and easy tools, quick mm -hmm. and easy tools. Yeah, very quick and easy. Yeah. Applicable right now in the moment, because that's what we need. We don't need, like, you can't, you don't have time to go take a therapy session <laughs> when somebody is throwing you off <laughs> and you yeah. can go off the meter and change lives. You don't have time for that. You have to go within. It's right here. Everything you need is within you. Mm -hmm. It's here and it's here and it's here, you know, so. Yeah, our no. thoughts, our thoughts, <laughs> the our words creates our emotion, creates our reality. It really does. It yes. really does. Emotional control, um, emo emotional intelligence. Like, who are you as a grown woman, as a uh, entrepreneur, influencer, as a mother, as a father, you know, as a leader? Who are you? to let people get you off your game and not focused and, and off center, you know, when you have such a work to do, you have a movement out here, you know? Yeah, you have a movement. I, I, it's so true. And then letting people pull you off of that. Yeah. Is that worth it? Like I love, for me, it's all about where's my time and energy and my focus going. My focus is not going to be on this nonsense because yeah. what's that doing for me? Yes, yes. I want to go on this where I, my focus is here. I am centered. I am able to move forward. And guys, if you can take the questions that Charisse asked, like, who are you? Who do you want to be? And really sit with them and discover, because it really is an adventure of discovery. You're doing a whole journey yeah. to the world within yeah. to change the world without. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have um, any last comments or a great tool? And I'd love for you to share where people can reach out to you, where they can find you and contact you. Okay. Well, um, first, let me let you know where you can contact me. I'm anywhere. Show up with Sharice B on all the channels, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, I'm playing with TikTok, <laughs> threads, anywhere, even on LinkedIn. I think I'm sure it was Sharice B. Uh, so please follow me. I would love to meet you, get to know you better, bring you into my community as well um, so we can share and grow together. Uh, and I really would like to just share with people today, Trisha, um, focus on what you have, you know, focus on what you have within you. Stop looking outside of yourself so much because you have everything you need within you. Tap into a community like Trisha's, okay? A community that is here to open up your mindset, uh, to open up your heart, your soul, uh, to teach you the tools and resources that you need to become better. You know, I know that a lot of people don't understand, you know, a lot of the talk that we're having about, you know, elevation and uh, growing and healing. You know, people think healing is something that you have to do privately. It starts with sharing first. And it starts with sharing the with the right community you know, and once you tap into that community, that's where you can evolve, okay, and that's where you can open yourself up and feel safe, um, and then most of you want to build a new community for yourself, and then this is where you learn, you know, right here in communities like this with Trisha, you know, when I met Trisha, I knew Trisha was a healer, but I was still getting to know her. And when I learned more about her light work and just, you know, opening people up to who they really truly are and helping them understand, like for me, the empath, I believe I am an empath, but I know some empaths to the hundred thousand power, <laughs> right? Who really have issues with being around people. So when I started to tap into your work more, it helped me understand a lot of my people and my tribe and my community and how to deal with them better, you know, because they are such empaths and I'm such an open um, book. And it, it helped me a lot when I started listening to your empath work. 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And guys, she's she's helped me tremendously with who I am, my assets, really getting out there, you know, and, and other ways. But I really, really want to point out, which is really important. I did it myself. Years and years ago, I was afraid to reach out. I was afraid to share because I, I didn't know what type of reaction I was going to get. Cause I was always told growing up, don't share, keep your problems to yourself. Nobody wants to hear it. Always go out there. Like everything's, you know, perfect. Mm -hmm. And when I really got on this journey and I ended up in, in some really great groups and I started to open my mouth, I was like, Oh my God, I'm not the only one who has gone through this. I am not right. the only one who's had these difficulties and obstacles and challenges. When you start to realize that, it then becomes easier, yeah. at least it did for me, to move forward because now I didn't feel so damn alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're not alone, but when you've been, you know, secluded and when you've been told that don't do this and don't do that, don't let them see you this, that, and the other, you know, you feel like, oh, well, I can't let anyone know my secrets and I can't let anyone know what I'm going through. You are going to be alone. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 So guys, you know, reach out to Sharice. She is on all social media. How you've got uh, communities too. So if you want to drop a link to a community that you have, um, and guys, any questions that you have post below, we will come back. We will respond. Um, if you want, you can send a message through social media um, and ask as well. All right, guys, I hope you have a fabulous Friday and a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining me today, Cherise. Thank you so much, Trisha. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Enjoy your Friday. You too.